this computer. All right. Sige, so let's do this. So um, guys, good evening. Magandang gabi sa lahat. And we have a special guest as announced yesterday, no? And we are very privileged to have him kasi I was only thinking to have one session with him kasi nakakahiya eh. And then uh, he wanted to give more sa ating lahat in terms of like stock market decisions, investing or trading, or more on investing. And just to give you a little bit of a background of Robbie, he is um, a business development associate of First Metro Securities. If you remember, when we want to invest in the stock market, we need to have a brokerage firm. And First Metro Securities happens to be one of them, especially here in the Philippines. And then uh, he is also featured na rin sa ANC. No? So for those people na mahilig sa mga news, mga financials, yan, makita nyo ang mukha niya. So artista to ng ano natin, natin guest ngayon. And then uh, he also is a financial educator talaga. He travels all around, especially the world, no? Or here in the Philippines to share about financial education. Um, so ganun yung, ganun ka bigate ng ating guest for tonight. So it's a really privilege for us to have him. And if you want to join the Zoom call, no, meron tayong links at ating Facebook group. Kung kung nahihiya kayo, then uh, no problem since live man din to sa ating Facebook na na group. Okay? So guys, let's welcome Robbie. Robbie, I'm going to give you the floor. He's going to talk about how earnings affect stock prices and our investment decisions. Okay? So Robbie, go for it. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. No, so... Good evening, everyone. So thank you for for having me here again uh, this evening, no, and giving me this opportunity to talk to you about a little bit about the stock market and how you can uh, make profits from it. So yeah. So like Sir Sir John said, uh, uh, what we're going to talk about here this evening is how to understand better the reason why earnings affects prices, no, because um, when I talk to a lot of clients, kasi, one of the things that I seem to get from them whenever they they talk to me is that parang masyado silang clueless about about the market. They they always seem like they have no idea what is going to happen to the stock market. Kaya they consider the stock market as a volatile or very, very risky investment. When in fact, uh, the truth is, oh, so totoo naman din yun, volatile siya in a way, relatively risky siya in a way. But the truth is, uh, the reason why stock prices move is because of the earnings potential of the companies. So that is something that I want to, to discuss with you here this evening because I wanted to, to have the chance to really help you understand better bakit nga ba gumagalaw yung mga pressure ng mga stocks and paano ba natin ma maiintindihan siya ng maayos para pwede tayong makapag-invest sa mga kumpanya na mas malamang ay eh, umakyat kaysa sa bumba. So, um, if it's okay, sir, no, I'll, I'll, I'd like to share a uh, sub-screen. So, I prepared a, sure. few, a few slides here for you to, to help us understand and see clearly yung inaan natin. So, um, loading it up lang. So By the yeah, way, guys, so before, uh, yeah. we're gonna do our best to finish this on or before nine because meron din akong call at nine p.m. with one of our community members. But don't worry, uh, meron din tayong another session on May one, same time, in case kung hindi natin to matapos. And prepare your questions as well. Sige. So just want to inform everybody about it. Going back, Rob. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. So um, yun. So again, I'd like. Introduce myself. No? So again, I'm Robbie Samson. So ako yung uh, business development section head for, for Mindanao for First Metro Securities. So a bit of background about myself. Um, I am a SEC Cert Securities Representative and Investment Solicitor. So that means I am a licensed stockbroker and uh, a licensed mutual fund solicitor. Uh, and from that, no, uh, I'm a cert Certified Financial Markets Professional. And yun, actually, 
hindi naman ako graduate ng finance. Uh, I graduated BS Industrial Engineering from Ateneo de Davao. And uh, doon na din ako nag-MBA uh, last year. No? So, that's me. And so, yun, yung like I, like I mentioned earlier, what I, what I wanted to discuss here with you this evening is how earnings affect stock prices. So, before we go there, uh, I'd like to talk to you about Ano ba yung earning? So ano ba yung tinatawag natin na yun ng earning? So ito yung simple formula of net income or earnings which is essentially yung total sales mo, total revenues ng is kumpanya less your total expenses. So pagka mas madami ang revenues kaysa sa expenses, ibig sabihin meron kang net income. Pagka naman mas malaki ang expenses mo kaysa sa sales mo or sa revenues, um meron kang net loss. That's the, kumbaga, that's the easy, easy answer to that. So, in the stock market, kasi, uh, di ba, when when we invest in the stock market, it is only logical that we that we want to, ano, that we want to make money, no? We want to invest in a company that is bound to make money in the future. So, because of that. Uh, ang gusto natin mangyari is um, gusto natin makahanap tayo ng kumpanya na merong potential kumita in the future. Ayaw natin mag-invest sa isang kumpanya na feeling natin malulugi. Diba? Because otherwise, we would also be losing money in our investments. So gusto natin malaman kung anong kumpanya ba yung kikita at kung anong kumpanya ba yung kayang palakasin at pataasin ang kita niya year after year. So essentially, that's the stock uh, in a nutshell. Uh, in the short term, no, pagka short term lang ang usapan, yes, subject tayo sa kung anong volatility, subject tayo sa ano-anong speculation. But over the long term, uh, what matters most is the ability of a company to make money and to make sure they are increasing their ability to make money. So, ganun lang siya ka-simple. Kaya, um, if you're wondering, no? If you're wondering, bakit, di ba, nagtataka kayo, grabe naman ang stock market, ang laki ng binagsak na yun. Uh, may pandemic, ang laki ng binagsak. Bakit naman sobrang laki ng binagsak ng stock market? Why? Because people believe companies will make less than they did last year. So that's the simple explanation for that. Nagbebenta ang mga investors ng stocks ngayon kasi the feeling nila hindi kaya tapatan or hindi kaya taasan ng mga kumpanya na ito yung kinita nila last year, this year, and maybe even next year. And why is that? Because of the pandemic. Because nagkaroon tayo ng ECQ in which case, sarado lahat ng mall, sarado lahat ng hardware, talagang ang natira na lang are the, are the establishments that cater to our basic necessities. Pero all the others, sarado na yan. Walang tourist spots, walang nagta-travel sa aeroplano, walang, walang pumupunta ng mall, nanonood ng sine, nanonood ng concerts, na kumakain sa restaurant. So all of those things are revenue stream of most of the listed companies in the Philippines. And when that ability to make money is put in doubt, when the ability of a corporation to make money is uh, being threatened, that makes investors very, very scared. No, That makes them very, very apprehensive when it comes to investing further. And so instead of holding on to their shares, what they decide to do is they would rather sell it back to the stock market. So, ganun siya. So now, ang goal natin this evening and uh, on Friday is um, how, how will we be able to how will we be able to use this information to make smart investing decisions? Uh, yun yung gusto nating malaman. How will they how will we be able to use them to make smart investing decisions? And so, one metric that we, we can use there is yung EPS na sinasabi or the earnings per share. So, uh, let me explain that in a bit. So, 
uh, yung EPS natin as seen here in this formula is uh, the, the formula is actually very simple. It's just your net income uh, less your preferred dividends divided by the weighted average number of outstanding shares of a stock. So net income, oh, kasi di ba, in the stock market, we have what we call preferred stocks. So yung preferred stockholders, kasi they are guaranteed or they are entitled to receive dividends. So before pa makompute yung earnings per share mo, kailangan tanggalin mo yung preferred dividends na yan. So kaya sa tinatanggal sa net income. And then you divide it by the number of shares outstanding. Later on, we have an example for that. That will give you the earnings per share. So ibig sabihin, for every share you own of this particular company, ganitong kadaming pesos ang kinikita niya para sa'yo. So later on, we'll go to, we will see the importance of that. But before we go there, uh, i-introduce ko lang din yung second formula, which is the diluted EPS. So, dalawang klase kasi yung EPS natin. We have the basic EPS na nakita natin kanina. And we have this right now, yung diluted EPS formula. Ang nadagdag lang dito is that in addition to the shares outstanding, idadagdag mo yung mga, yung mga pwedeng maging uh, converted common shares in the future. So, meron kasi minsan tayong tinatawag na convertible bonds, convertible preferred stocks. So ang ibig sabihin nun, uh, after certain conditions are met, yung bonds na yun or yung preferred stocks na yun magiging common shares. So ibig sabihin, pagka naging common shares siya, dadagdag siya dun sa number of shares outstanding mo. So lalaki yung denominator mo. So pag lumaki yung denominator mo, ibig sabihin, madidilute yung earnings per share mo. Uh, gets, di ba? Madidilute siya. So, ibig sabihin, liliit yung earnings per share mo. So, this is actually a more conservative way no, to, to compute for the earnings per share of a particular company kasi it takes into consideration all of the options, warrants, and other dilutive securities that may be in the, in the company. So, yun lang naman yung difference nila but it's significant nonetheless so, kung medyo conservative kayo when you want to compute your EPS, you can refer to the diluted EPS formula. So, yun. So, um, ganito. No? Ganito. So, one thing that um, I, I, want to, I want to make sure that we all understand is that uh, when it comes to investing in the stock market kasi, as much as possible, we want to compare apples to apples, di ba? Uh, not apples to oranges or apples to strawberries. We want to compare apples to apples. So, hindi mo pwedeng i-compare yung telecom company sa isang uh, water company o kaya isang grocery company or isang airline company kasi masyadong malalayo yung factors nila. So, as much as possible, ang magandang gawin natin is that we will be able to to ano them to compare them with their appropriate peers. Uh, let me give you an example. Yeah. So let's go back. Yeah. So katulad nito, um, we have here Globe and PLDC. Now these two are definitely comparable. In fact. Comparable sila kasi nga uh, major competitor sila. So, Globe uh, is a telco company. Meron silang cellphone, internet, broadband. They also sell phone plans. The same is true for PLDT. Now, aside from that, uh, if you'll notice here, makikita ninyo, yung market capitalization, meaning kung ano yung, kung gano'ng kalaki yung kumpanya nila, halos pareho lang sila. Ang market capitalization ni Globe is 300 billion pesos while the market cap of PLDT right now is at around 260 billion pesos. So, magkasing laki sila na kumpanya. So, in that regard, medyo comparable talaga sila. Kasi hindi mo pwedeng i-compare si Globe sa sari-sari store, di ba? Hindi mo pwedeng i-compare si Globe sa isang maliit na na property company. 
kung masyadong malayo ang market capitalization nila. So, you have to be able to compare them with similar uh, comparable companies. So, yung shares outstanding natin, yun yung sinasabi natin na ginagamit sa formula to compute the EPS. So, yung market cap po, uh, it is computed by simply multiplying the shares outstanding with the market price of the stock. So, 2,258 times 133 something million is going to give you 300, 300 billion in market cap. So, ganun po tayo mag-compute niyan. So, that's, that's the first thing. So now, in the stock market, kasi, no, um, one thing that investors care so much about is not just whether the company is making money, but whether the company is able to grow the money that it is making. So hindi natin tinitingnan lang kung whether kumita ba or nalugi yung kumpanya. So hindi yun enough for investors. Ang gusto ng investors nakikita nila kung yung kinita mo ba kaya mong taasan sa kita mo this year or next year or the year after that. So you want to make sure that the company is able to to really grow its income year after year. Why? Why is it important to grow your income? Kasi pagka nag-grow ka ng income, it's like saying your your company is getting bigger in size, di ba? It's um, growing. So pagka ibig sabihin pagka kumikita or tumataas ang sales mo, ang revenues mo, most likely ibig sabihin niyan nag-i-increase din ang iyong market share. So you are taking sales from your competitor. So you want to increase your market share so that you will have more revenue and yung revenues na yan dapat continuously nag-grow. So as we can see here, si Globe Telecom, if you see in 2015, yung EPS niya, no, yung EPS niya was at 120 pesos per share. The following year, it went down. It went down to 115. And in 2017, bumaba pa ulit lalo to 109. Thankfully, in 2018, umakit siya. Naka-recover siya. It grew by 24%. And in 2019, it went up by 20%. So dito natin makikita, uy, si Globe pala minsan, hindi consistent na, na nag increase ang EPS. No? Hindi consistent ang earnings growth niya. So what could be the reason? So now, if you want to, if you're considering investing in Globe, what you have to consider is whether you have to find out why is globe no why is globe um not making uh not growing its earnings from 2015 to 2016 and what made it grow its earnings from 2017 to 2018 so those are things that you now have to understand better kasi uh, as i will show you again in a later example this is very important for a lot of investors Pagka nakikilang consistently kaya mong palaktihin ang earnings growth mo, most likely maraming magpapatronize or marami ang bibili ng shares mo. If not, they are likely to sell it. And I will show you this example later. So here, we can also see from this chart, si Globe, there are quarters where in hindi nila nami-meet yung forecast. So what do we mean by forecast? Kasi um, each company, no, each listed company, they have what they call their um, investor relations arm. So yun yung uh, department ng kumpanya nila na nako-communicate with the brokerages, with the investors on what they can expect from the company in the near future. So sila yung sasabi na ah, Globe, uh, Globe expects to spend 20 billion pesos on building towers next year or globe expects to make uh, expects an earning growth of 15% in 2021 so sila yung nagko-communicate no? aside from that inaaral din siya ng mga analysts and so they come up with forecasts so when things happen you know, when 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 events happen that will make a company either go below 
or go above the forecast, they will have a, a direct impact in the share price of a company. So ano bang ibig sabihin natin dyan? This is the this is the stock price of Globe. Now, this is the stock chart of Globe from 2015 until uh, until today. So makikita ninyo, di ba, nakita natin kanina. From 2015 to 2017, ano yung nakita natin? Bumabagsak ang EPS ni Globe. Di ba? Bumabagsak yung EPS growth niya. Hindi nag-grow. Hindi lumalaki. Kumikita pa din si Globe kasi net ink pa din siya. Pero yung kita niya, hindi lumalaki. Lumiliit. And so, lumiliit ang kita ng isang kumpanya, makikita ninyo from 2015 to 2017, ano yung trajectory ng share price ni Globe? Bumabagsak. Yeah, bumabagsak siya. So makikita natin dito yung expectation and yung reality of earnings for listed companies affect the share price of a stock. So yun yung nakikita natin dito from 2015 to 2017. Here, let's revisit it. Yan. 2015, 2017, bumagsak si Globe from 120 pesos per share ang DS niya to 109. The stock chart reflected that same sentiment. Bumagsak din siya. Afterwards, nakita natin from 2017 to 2018 and 2018 to 2019, umakyat naman yung EPS ni Globe, yung growth niya. No? Tumaas ang EPS and so nag-exhibit yun ng growth. So what happened? Medyo nag-consolidate lang siya. Medyo flat lang siya for the past two years. So now, you would be wondering, no? you might be wondering, bakit ganun? Nung bumabagsak yung EPS ni Globe, bumabagsak ang stock price niya. Pero bakit ngayon na maakyat na yung stock price niya, Eh, hindi naman din umaakyat yung chart ni Globe. Flat lang siya. Hindi siya bumabagsak, pero hindi din siya umaakyat. Diba? So, you might be wondering that. Um, siguro, now would be the perfect time to, to ask you, is there, has there been any reason recently, no? has there been any reason recently for Globe to, to be trend in their industry? So, meron ba? Meron bang development recently over the past few years that would make you think twice about the position of Globe? Diba? Sabi nga natin, gusto natin nag increase ang earnings. Why? Because it means umakit ang revenue. And pag umakit ang revenue, most likely, it will increase your market share. So, ngayon, hindi siya umaakyat. Is there a development out there that might threaten Globe's ability to increase their market share or even maybe lower their market share? Uh, siguro, sa inyo. Yes. Yeah. yes. For for me, recently, siguro, it was the, the news about having this third telco. Possible ba yun na factor ng bakit parang nag-dip konti yung price niya? Ayun. So, actually, talaga. So that is the that is the exact reason why investors are hesitant to fully trust Globe again kahit na nag-exhibit na siya ng ability to recover their earnings. So yun talaga yun kasi alam natin si Dito Tele which is poised to be the third telco in the country is being yeah it's being supported by the government is being helped by the government to to secure the necessary franchises, permits, tapos yun nga, they're trying to open up the industry to more players, no? to, to make the competition higher so that the services will ideally be better and then the prices will ideally be lower. So because of that, since threatened yung position ni Globe and of course ni PLDT, kahit nagpapakita ng magandang earnings si Globe, hindi pa fully ma makatiwala ng 100% kung baga yung investors. Kung baga, may tiwala sila kay Globe pero hindi pa yung sobra-sobra kasi hindi pa nila dinadrive up yung prior than yung all-time high niya 2,700 pesos per share. So that's how those are the dynamics at work when it comes to to the stock market. No? 
So, meron kang actual earnings. Itingnan mo kung kumikita ba yung kumpanya. Itingnan mo din kung nagpakita ba ng ability yung kumpanya na yun to grow its earnings. And then, you also have to consider the, the wider perspective of okay pa ba siya? Insulated pa ba siya? Or meron ba siyang competitor na pwedeng maka, makakain sa position niya right now? So, yun yung ganon. So, those are the dynamics at play. So, let's take a look naman. Uh, let's take a look at PLDT. So, let's take a look din at PLDT. And we can see here, PLDT out the same. Bumaba yung earnings niya, no? yung EPS niya from 2015 to 2017. And then, 2018 to 2019, nag-recover din siya. So, supposedly, iisipin mo, uy! nakaka-recover na si PLDT, di ba? Um, things should be looking up for PLDT. Now, this is their forecast then. So let's look at the stock chart naman of PLDT. It's still going down. Why? Because people still believe na yun nga, there is competition in the horizon. And they are unsure of how Right now, kasi hindi pa nila alam yung capabilities ni Dito Telecom. Diba? But so far, what's being promised is that they will do their best to, to cover a lot of areas immediately, to provide um, good services, better services. And so, uh, medyo, medyo natitreaten din yung position ni PLDT. A little bit more so than Globe right now. No? Kasi si Globe at least siguro medyo medyo wala kasing bad investment kasi isang bad investment si PLDT. So si Globe wala kaya hindi naman tumitinamaan talaga yung earnings nila ng sobrang laki. But PLDT din. And so right now, it's still basically near the bottom. no Near the recent bottom. As you can see, it's at around 1,200 pesos lang. So, uh, the point lang here is is that that's how much the prospect of earnings uh, play in the stock market. Essentially, no, essentially, yun lang talaga ang dapat isipin natin. Before we invest in a stock, let us question whether it seems to have the ability to make more money in the future. If it does, more and more people will buy it later on. If it doesn't, more and more people will sell it later on. So it really is kumbaga, that simple. No? So just to show you further no, the, the impact of earnings, no, kung gano'n ka-importante, let's look at this example. This is Ayala Land. No? And this is the stock chart of Ayala Land from 2019 to, uh, 2009 to 2019. Essentially after the recession. Ito yung stock chart niya. Kung makikita natin, ang PSE in the same time period, it made 300%. But si Ayala Land, it more than double the performance of the PSEI. So it made 650% in 10 years. And as you can see, dun sa, dun sa parang chart natin below, um, it continuously increased its income. 2014, 14B ang income niya. The following year, it became 17. The following year, it became 21. The following year, it became 25. And then, in 2018, naging 29 siya. So, ibig sabihin, during 2009 to 2019, no, people were expecting uninterrupted consistency for Ayala Land. And since Ayala Land was able to deliver on that promise, they were able to deliver on the expectations of uh, investors, Investors just on buying Ayala Land. So much so that they were able to outperform the index. So over the long term, yun talaga yung mangyayari. Diba? Yun talaga yung mangyayari. People will gravitate towards more and more money in the future. So it's not a matter of hindi lang ang tanong dan is kumikita ba yan? Diba? Kasi minsan yung iba ganun lang yung nagiging tanong. Ayoko mag-invest sa company na nalulugay. Gusto ko doon sa kumikita. No. We have to make sure that 
the peop- the companies that do make money are able to keep increasing it. Kasi if they make 14 billion this year and then the next year they make 14 billion lang din, the, the company did not ano, the company did not grow, di ba? They did not they did not penetrate new markets, they did not increase their market share, pero baka nakainan pa sila. So yung mga ganong factors. So people don't like that. People want comp- continuously expand and increase their earnings. So the next example, eto. So just to show you again, CURC. So CURC kasi nag-umpisa talaga siya ng sobrang mura. I think in 2009, it was at 5 pesos. And then, uh, once the economy recovered from the the, the great uh, financial crisis ng 2008 2009 so medyo naka recover yung economy of course yung pinapatronize din are the are the are the products na medyo mura that appeal to the mass market and CURC talagang mass market ang appeal niya di ba they they sell Jack and Jill C2 uh, blend 40 great taste i think mad flakes magic chips stuff like that so they cater to the mass market. And let's look at URC. From 2014 to 2015, it increased its earnings from 11.5 to 12.38 billion. 2015-2016, it went from 12 to 15. Good. Now, take a look here. From 2016 to 2017, what happened? Ang earnings niya it went from 15 and it essentially lost about a third of it to around 11 billion. So, malaking drop yun. And if you look at the arrow on top sa chart, you will see na, uy, URC stopped going up. So around 2016, around first, second quarter of 2016, say, pag first, second quarter ng 2016, Yung mga analyst dyan, medyo na-anticipate na nila yung posibleng mangyari. Diba? They are able to anticipate what might happen next. And if parang weaker ang earnings mo sa first quarter, then there must be a reason for that. If your earnings for the first quarter of 2016 or, or, or 2016 or 2017 were lower than before, then they were anticipating that it could go lower pa din from there. Which is exactly what is happening right now in the Philippines. Diba? Nagkaroon lang tayo on the onset of the lockdown. Two days after nag, nag-ECQ, binentahan agad. Diba? Binentahan agad yung market. It went down by a lot. Diba? We went down to 4,000. From 7,000 to 4,000 in a matter of one or two weeks sa tayo. Wala pa namang nire-release na earnings. Pero alam natin, maapektuhan ng earnings nila. So we will not wait until they actually announce na, hey, we, we, we lost money this year or hey, we made so much less than we did last year this quarter. So people will not wait for that. At the first sign of your earnings being threatened, investors will tell. And that is what happened to you in this instance. This was the time when people, uh, when... Vietnam discovered na medyo mataas yung lead content sa ano di ba sa C2. So parang binan sila sa Vietnam noon. So of course, being an exporter in that market, syempre nawala yung sales from that area. So if totally nawalan ka ng sales sa sa Vietnam, then that's lost revenues again. Which is similar to what is happening right now. Nag-lockdown si Abriza for two months, essentially lahat ng tenant doon walang kinita for two months. So, basically, you now only have 10 months of earnings versus 12 months of earnings last year. So, it's going to be very, very hard to catch up to that. And even if a lift na yung ECQ, di natin alam kung ganong kadami ba ulit yung babalik sa Abriza same as last year. So, threaten na agad yung earnings mo. Kaya bumabagsak yung stocks right now. So when your earnings are being threatened, no? when your earnings are being threatened, people will really, really, really sell. And that is what happened. See, which is why it went from as high as um, 240 pesos around 2015. Right now, 
it's at around 120 something pesos na lang. So it lost its nearly half its value in a span of three years because people expected that it will post lower earnings than before. And which is what happened then from 2016 to 2017 went from 15 to 11. 2017, 2018, it went from 11 to 9. So it went lower. When people now believe that it will go higher, that's the time they will start buying. And when URC does post that they are higher, more and more people will buy it. So yun yung dynamics at play when it comes to this. Kaya even if kumikita, hindi na maliit yung kumita ka ng 9 billion in one year. Diba? That's big. Pero since your 9 billion was lower than your 11 billion last year, that's not good. Even if you still made money, that's not good. So it does the market doesn't need for you to lose money in order to to ano, to sell down. So you can just make less money than last year, and investors will already have a reason to sell your shares and look for another stock that has the opportunity to make more than they did before. Because we should always be forward looking. Because we, when we invest in a company, parang nakalimutan na natin lahat yung nangyari before, di ba? We only use it as a reference to gauge whether the company has the ability but to make money. Pero, we don't really care whether this company made money or they increased their earnings every year by 10% for the past 10 years. We don't really care about that if this year or the year after we invest, they'll only make 5% more. So parang ganon. So, in, in that case, no? In that case, dito natin makikita ngayon kung factor, yung sentiment or yung forecast ng mga, ng mga investors sa stock price ng isang kumpanya. So, this is, uh, actually, this is as of yesterday pa. So, medyo na slight changes lang siya today, but uh, the wins and losses are the same pa din. So, ito yung mga top and performers atin for this year, no? year to date. The top 10 performers in the PSEI. And out of the 30 stocks in the PSEI, year to date, only three of them is up. No? Only three of them are green. All of the companies, no? all the rest of the 27 blue chip stocks are down. So kung mapapansin ninyo, look, dito natin makikita, no? Just how important sentiment, forecast, and then uh, logic then uh, plays part in whether a stock will go up or down. So if you'll notice, what are the only three stocks that are green so far for this year? PLDT, Pure Gold, and Globe. Two of those are telco companies. Diba? Like right now, diba? we we cannot hold in-person classes. Diba? We cannot hold seminars at our office in Adriza. So what is our next best solution? Online. Online. <laughs> online, online. So if you're going online, especially dito sa Davao, uh, I think konti lang naman yung internet providers. I think siguro tatlo lang, PLDT, Globe, and then Sky Cable, I think. And dalawa lang doon ang listed. So, sila lang din yung parang medyo relatively stable ang earnings. Diba? Or merong at, at the very least, even though it's not guaranteed, they, the very least, are in the best position to make more money now than they did before. So, ako kasi, syempre, uh, ang thing ko naman is, uh, Siyempre, to remain conservative, di ba? Parang let's assume na lang na now is not the right time na magpaputol ka ng internet, di ba? So most likely, hindi sila maglulus masyado ng subscribers ngayon, di ba? In fact, they are, they probably are one of the few companies that might experience upgrades from their subscribers. Katulad na, no? kung sasabihin nila, ay, Ayo lumabas ng bah or the company is allowing us to work from home for an extended period of time after the lifting pa lang. So, na need internet. So, siguro kung dati DSL ko baka kailangan magpa-upgrade to fiber. 
So there is that opportunity for these companies to to make a little bit more money as compared to kunwari uh, kunwari SSI ka or store specialist. So sila kasi yung franchise holders nung Rustans, nung mga branded karamihan ng mga branded stores sa Abrida, yung mga Armani, yung mga Gap, I think, uh, yung mga ganon, yung Marks and Spencer, stuff like that. I think uh, franchise yun under SSI. So sila, definitely during the ECQ and e- possibly even after the ECQ, they might see lower, they were lower revenues because less and less people will go to malls and then, kung medyo humihirap ang ekonomiya, hindi mo naman ipaprioritize na may bago kang mahalig damit. Di ba? Your priority will be paying the bills, stuff like that. So, hindi sila masyadong good in this kind of environment. Uh, but si LDT, si Globe, since we can anticipate na medyo immune sila to that, pwedeng, ano sila, mas, mas well-positioned sila to to recover faster in this type of uh, climate. And right now, because their stock prices are up when everyone else is down, it seems like a lot of investors feel that way. So, ganun siya. So, hindi naman ibig sabihin nito na guaranteed na next year or this year, mas kataas ang kita ni PLDT and ni Globe kesa last year. No, it's not a guarantee. Pero, in our case ngayon, baka mas konti ang losses nila kesa sa ibang mga kumpanya heavily reliant on consumer activity. So, parang ganon. Uh, and uh, the other stock that went up this year, no, in the index is Pure Gold. Which, we all know, lahat establishments ngayon sarado, pero if you are treated as, a, as an essential service in the time of a pandemic, will be allowed by the government to remain open. And si Pure Gold, by virtue of being a supermarket, so dito sa atin, I think isa lang naman yung Pure Gold sa Misasa, pero kay Pure Gold din naman kasi si SNR. So, malaki ang, hindi naman mas malaki ang kinikita, pero kumikita pa din. Kumpara sa iba na wala talagang kinikita. Diba? So parang ganon. So those are some of the elements in play. That's why sentiment also matters when it comes to selecting stocks. No. So ganon. So now um I'd like to this so that's EPS. Essentially that's that's EPS. So that's how much um earnings no matter in the grand scheme of things when it comes to investing. So when you are faced with a choice between one company or the other, it's best to select a company that feel will make more money in the future, that has the capacity to expand, diba? That has the and when we say capacity, it's not just the capacity na yung may, may market. Tapat you have to factor in a lot of other things. Is the management capable? Diba? Is the manager capable of expanding? Kasi even if may opportunity dyan, if merong market dyan, pero hindi magaling yung management, hindi nila nasasamantala yung market na yun, uh, wala pa ding silbi yun. So that's why uh, people also look at the management team, the management quality, the 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 performance of, of the company before because they want to make sure that they investing in a company that can actually fulfill mga promises and yung mga objectives nila for their company in the future. So something like that. So yun yung earnings. No? So that's how important earnings are uh, in the grand scheme of things. So um, I think we have uh, I think we have about 10 minutes left. No? So it's okay. Uh, um, yeah. na extend uh, pumayag yung si Aleriza to extend our call to 9:30 so you have more time. Yes. Ah okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thank sige. you Aleriza. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sige. So, yun. So, now that we're uh, I think uh okay na with with earnings for now, uh the next thing I would like to discuss is the price to earnings ratio naman. So, before I 
before I discuss the example, so I guess it's a, it's a good idea to define it first. So yung definition ni PE ratio, price to earnings ratio, is that it's a valuation ratio of a company's current share price compared to its per share earnings. So, ang calculation niya, although hindi naman na siya necessary ngayon, kasi it's easy to get the PE ratio na ngayon, but yung calculation niya is market value. So, say market value, that's essentially the price of the stock divided by the EPS, which we saw earlier how to compute. But again, we don't need to compute these things anymore. But I just wanted to show you ano yung components nila. So, for example, if one company is currently trading at 45 pesos per share and uh, yung EPS niya over the last year was uh, 250 per share. So, ang gagawin mo lang, you would divide the two. So, 45 divided by 250 gives you 18. Or since PE is a multiplier, 18 times. When we say 18 times, that means you need to pay 1 peso in order, uh, you need to pay 18 pesos in order to earn 1 peso. So, ganun siya. So, it's a, it's a sort of a valuation metric. Kasi, uh, uh, dito, ang tanong naman natin, sulit ba siya? Yeah, so, yung EPS, yung na-discuss natin kanina, that can help you decide which company to patronize, no? which company to select as an investment. Uh, yung PE naman will be the one to tell you whether it's, uh, kumbaga, whether it's cheap or whether it's expensive. Cheap or expensive compared to what? It could be compared to lots of different things. Compared to its historical prices. Compared to its competitors. Compared to its sectors. So, madami kang pwedeng gamitin comparisons. No? So, we will go through them uh, one by one. So, yun. So, let's say merong company A and company B. So, let's say both of those companies are relatively the same. No? So, they, let's assume that they are very, very, very similar in nature. Talagang halos parehong-pareho lang sila. Pareho ng market size, pareho ng binibenta, pareho ng number of employees, parehong magkasagaling yung management. So, all things be equal. Uh, let's say company A has a PE ratio of 18 times. So, meaning you need to pay 18 pesos to earn 1 meso. Whereas company B, let's say ang PE ratio niya, 12 times. Meaning, you need to pay 12 pesos in order to earn 1 peso. So given that, doon natin makikita sino doon sa dalawa na yun ang mas mahal, sino doon ang mas mura. Is it company A na you need to pay 18 to earn 1 peso? Or is it be that you need to pay 12 pesos to earn 1 peso. I think the answer is obvious. No? It's company B. Mas mura mm -hmm. si company B. Kasi 12 pesos lang ang ibabayad mo to earn 1 peso. Company A, 18. So from that perspective, uh, company A is more expensive than company B. And um, to me, that's important, no? Kasi one of the one of the misconceptions in the in the stock market, you no, know, especially for new investors, one of the mistakes that they make is thinking na madedetermine mo kung mahal or mura ang stock based on the share price. So yon. Kasi madami akong na na, na encounter yon. So so yun, ah, sir sir Rob, di ba sir Rob? Uh, ayoko bumili ng Globe or ayoko bumili ng SM ayoko bumili ng Ayala Corp kasi ang mahal 900 pesos, 700 pesos per share, di ba? Gusto ko yung mura lang, yung tagpipiso So, ganun uh, ganun yung inaanon na ganun yung thinking, di ba? Ganun yung thinking nila. They think that uh, the share price will tell you whether a stock is expensive or cheap So, after hindi yun so, doon po mapasok ngayon si E-Ratio. Kasi in the case of Globe, 2,200 pesos nga siya ngayon. Pero ang kinikita naman niya per share is 100 something. 100 
20 pesos per share ang earnings mo. So with that, ang P-E ratio mo for Globe, around 13.85. Whereas kunwari, especially right now, medyo popular. Si Dito, Dito CME Holding. So, uh, gagamitin ko lang siya, pero technically hindi na, natin dapat uh, i-co-compare yung dalawa. Kasi uh, si Dito CME Holdings is not a telecom company. This is a holding company. So, ang minsan kasi ibang investors, ang akala nila, since nasa loob ni Dito CME is Dito Tel, uh, siya na si Dito Tel talaga. So, technically, hindi. Pero right now, since hindi pa naman listed si Dito Tel sa stock market, a lot of people understandably use Dito Holdings as a proxy for Dito Telecom. So I'm just going to use it right now uh, para lang ano para lang makita natin yung contrast between uh, a speculative stock and a stock na medyo uh, mature na. So in this case, um si Globe ang PE ratio niya around 13.85 times lang. So meaning you need to pay 13.85 pesos to earn 1 peso. Whereas si dito even though tatlong dalawang piso lang yung presyo niya, ang PE ratio niya right now is 67 times. So, which means you need to pay 67 pesos to earn 1 peso. So, now, um, it's clear to see sino dito yung talagang mas mura, sino dito yung talaga mas mahal. So, in this case, Kung mura lang ang pinag-uusapan natin in terms of value, pwede natin consider na mas mura si Globe. Because you need to pay 13.85 lang to earn 1 peso. Whereas kay Dito, you need to pay 67. So even if Dito Tel is only 2 pesos per share and Globe is 2,000 pesos per share, mas mura pa din si Globe. So that's how we can approach it. Para hindi tayo magbe-base dun sa, dun sa presyo ng stock. Diba? That's, that's, uh, I think that's something that we need to avoid doing. So we cannot, uh, we can, we should not think that way because that's not the right way to evaluate a, a company. So this one is for contrast lang. Um, ideally, ideally again, similar to comparing the companies, you need to compare them to similar companies talaga to give you a better idea kung ano yung mas mura, ano yung mas mahal. So, in that regard, let's take a look at Globe and PLDT again. Diba? So, uh, I think it's safe to say that they are comparable. Diba? I think it's safe to assume naman na competitors talaga sila. In fact, sila lang talaga yung, yung major Sila lang talaga yung telco, di ba, na naglalaban dyan ngayon. So, I think it's safe to assume na competitors talaga sila. Um, so, with that said, we can take a look at their key statistics in this regard, uh, their PE ratio, their EPS. So, as we can see here, si Globe, again, 13.5 bang PE ratio niya. But yung EPS naman niya, 163 per Si PLDT man, based on the PE ratio, it seems like PLDT is cheaper by about uh, 2 pesos. No? It's about 2 pesos. Ang PE ratio niya is only 11.8. Uh, two times pala. So, 11.8. And then, ang EPS niya is around 102 pesos per share. So, dito makikita natin right now, mas mahal si Globe kesa KPLDT. So kung mm -hmm, diba? So kung purely value lang ang pinag-uusapan, kung gusto mo lang makita yung sino yung mas mura talaga sa kanila, the easy conclusion to make would be PLDT. Diba? PLDT. So now, diba? Now, Kasi we don't, the, the PE ratio kasi should be used as a decision tool, but it should not be the only thing you use. No? 
So, nautanong naman, bakit ganon? Bakit na mas mura si PLDT eh meron pa ding bumibili kay Globe? Uh, in the case of this particular, as of yesterday, si PLDT down ng 2.66% hapon, si Globe up ng 2.17% kahapon. Pero nag-umpisa sila na mas mahal na si Globe kesa kay PLDT. So, oh, with it, before the trading day started kahapon, in terms of B ratio, mas mahal si Globe kesa kay PLDT, pero still, investors bought Globe and sold PLDT. So, minsan magtataka ka, di ba? Medyo magtataka ka. Bakit gano'n? Bakit hindi na lang bumili ng PLDT yung mga tao? Eh, mas mura pala si PLDT. Di ba? Bakit hindi na lang si PLDT kesa kay Globe? So, dyan na ngayon papasok yung um, other analysis that you can employ. Kasi yung mga, yung mga investors, they don't just look at the P-E ratio, although they use it, they emphasize it, but they don't just look at it, they also consider other factors. So, what are those other factors? It could come in the services. Uh, sino ba ang mas madaming area ang nakocover? Sino ba ang mas maganda ang quality ng broadband, ng LTE? Sino ba yung nag, 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 nagbibigay ng mas magandang services or mas magandang freebies? Sino ba yung mas mura ang mga plans? Sino ba yung accessible ang branches, stuff like that? Sino ba yung mas maayos ang, ang sales, ang customer service, stuff like that? So those are things na you the, the investor thinks about and kaya ibig sabihin nito right now even if pldt is cheaper no in terms of the pe ratio by virtue of globe having having a higher pe ratio it seems like there is a little bit more positive sentiment with globe as compared to pldt parang ganun kaya binibilhan pa din siya no but things could change, of course. No? So what will uh, instigate or initiate those changes? Developments in the company. So that's something that we can watch out for when it comes to deciding on what companies to invest in in the future. So, um, yun. So, again, we can use the PE ratio to compare one peer or one company to another. What we have to remember lang ha, is that we have to compare similar companies talaga. Diba? Hindi natin pwedeng compare si Ayala Land sa isang maliit na property company kasi magkaiba talaga yan ng, ng magkaibang usapan yan. Kahit pareho sila ng sector, magkaibang usapan yan. So, ganun. So, that's uh, comparing a company to another company. The next thing is that we can actually compare the P-E ratio of a company to the P-E ratio of the sector. So, pwede din yun. So, di ba, the, in, the stock market is made up of over 200 companies, over 300 companies, I believe. Uh, what, so, within that market, meron tayong tinatawag na sector. So, naka-divide yan according to the sector that the company belongs in. So, meron tayong property holdings, financial, services, industrials, uh, mining and oil, stuff like that. So, meron tayong mga iba-ibang sectors. Now, uh, in this particular example, this is the services sector of the Philippines. Now, ito yung services sector sa, in the, sa stock market natin. And yung iba, no, yung iba, kino-compare siya against the P-E ratio of the sector. Um, unfortunately, here in the Philippines, uh, medyo mahirap compare sa sectoral P-E yung P-E ng isang kumpanya. Kasi as you can notice here, masyado pang wide yung, yung coverage ng isang sector. So within the services sector, meron pa yung mga subsectors dapat na ideal na division pero hindi pa siya na divide so di ba kita niyo sa services sector meron diyang ABS which is a 
uh, TV broadcast company, the broadcasting company. Meron kang Bloomberg, which is a casino, uh, 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 a gaming company. Meron kang Cebu Pacific, which is uh, an airline company. And si Globe. We have ICT, which is a terminal, no port services company. Meron kang Pigold, which is a supermarket. May Robinson's Retail ka, which is supermarket department store. Meron kang Harbor Star, which is Tugs. So shipping siya. Meron kang Philweb na yung ano, yung legal gambling. May Wilcon ka na parang hardware. So meron kang Macro Asia, which is yung mga uh, airplane airline services nagre-repair ng mga aeroplano so makikita natin sa services sector sobrang wide pa siya so kahit pa pwede mong kunin yung PE ratio ng sector na to mahirap i-compare yung yung PE ratio ni Globe versus PE ratio nung sector na yon kasi sobrang diverse nung nung inclusions nung sector na yon Kaya mas ginagamit natin yung i-compare mo siya versus the, the PE ratio of the sector, the company na closely related sa kanya. So, Globe, PLDT. Pure Gold, Robinson's Retail, siguro pwedeng medyo comparable siguro sila. Diba? Although, hindi pa din directly comparable kasi si Robinson's Retail may South Star Drug, may hardware, stuff like that. That's si Pure Gold, mostly retailing lang talaga. So, hindi pa din siya perfect comparison. So, di naman, in the same way, even if in the property sector, halos lahat na naman sila property companies, again, mahirap i-compare yung nang basta-basta yung isang kumpanya, yung PE ratio ng isang kumpanya, dun sa mga kasali niya sa sectors niya. Kasi katulad nun, hindi mo pwedeng compare si Ayala Land with uh, 8990 Holdings or K-House, which is sila yung may-ari ng Deca Homes. Kasi, uh, iba sila ng market, di ba? Uh, yung kinikater na, kahit pa pareho silang nasa property sector, yung kinikater na market ni 8990 is a bit different from the kinikater ni Ayala Land. Aside from that, Ayala Land is a much, much, much larger company than 8990. So, mas mataas ang growth prospects ni 8990 as compared to Ayala Land siguro. Kasi konting kita lang, mas malaki impact sa income niya, sa earnings. Stuff like that. Um, this is an example of that. No? This is an example of that. Uh, why it's a bit useless and why we should be careful no, when using the PE ratio to compare companies that are in entirely different sectors or even subsectors. Kasi we will not be able to make a good decision from it. Diba? So let's look at this one, this example. Um, si Universal Robina, URC, no? so we know that. Uh, and let's compare it with Manila Water. So we know that Manila Water is a water distribution company. So here we see that uh, um, Manila Water, uh, URC, the PE ratio of URC is around 27.7 times. So you pay 27 pesos to earn 1 peso. Uh, si Manila Water naman, it's 5 times lang, especially ngayon, bumagsak siya because of uh, issues with the government. So, bumagsak siya, it's trading at 5 times P lang. So, you need to pay 5 pesos in order to earn 1 peso. So, magtataka kayo ngayon, grabe naman mura ni Manila Water. Diba? So, kumbaga, based on the PE ratio, sobrang mura naman niya. Bakit? Bakit hindi na lang siya bilhin ng karamihan ng tao kesa bumili ng URC na when comparing the two would seem expensive. So why is that? And now we go back to the prospects of growth and earnings potential. Si, si Manila Water, no, even if mababa ang PE ratio niya, aside from the fact na medyo meron pa siyang problems, di ba? Nagkaroon siya ng issue with the government. 
But even if wala siyang issue, ang PE ratio niya nasa 8, 9, 10, something like that. Bakit hindi masyadong tumataas yung PE ratio niya? Ibig sabihin kasi, pag masyado kasing mababa ang PE ratio mo, ibig sabihin nun, aside from the fact na pwede kang makonsider as mura, pwede ka ding makonsider as hindi ka in demand. No? There is no, there is little demand for your shares. Kaya hindi umaakyat. Eh. Let's remember uh, the basics. No? How do stock prices go up? Diba? Law of supply and demand. So, pagka malakas ang demand, more and more people are willing to pay at higher prices. So, by virtue of, yun lang talaga ang reason kung bakit umaakyat ang presyo kasi mas malaki ang demand. Mas malaki ang demand kasi ina-anticipate ng tao, mas malaki kikitain niya in the future. Basically, yun, you have to have the demand first. So, kung masyadong mababa ang P ratio mo, uh, ibig sabihin, baka walang demand. So, in a way, si Manila Water, bakit, natin sa ting bakit sa tingin natin mababa ang P-E ratio niya? One, one, one thing siguro is that aside from the problems nga, uh, aside from the recent issues last year, uh, it could be because it's a, it, it operates in a heavily regulated industry. Di ba? So, yung tube, di ba yun nga yung naging issue eh, yung uh, kung ano-ano issue, di ba, yung pinapasa sa consumers, yung dapat sila ang nag-shoulder, whatever like that. So, hindi ka pwede basta-basta magtaas ng presyo dyan, di ba? Hindi ka pwede magtaas ng singil dyan. Kahit pa technically, mamonopolize mo yung isang area na yan at ikaw lang ang water distributor dyan. Hindi mo pwede sabihin na, ah, wala kayong choice, di ba? Sa akin lang kayo pwede kumuha ng tubig and so ganito ko tataasan yung presyo. So the government definitely will will not allow that. So because of that, yung earnings potential niya medyo may konting pwede na i-consider na ceiling. Na hindi niya pwedeng lampasan basta-basta. Whereas in URC, it operates in a very very different uh, industry. So, nasa consumer industry siya wherein there are a lot of competitors. And since there are a lot of competitors in that space with URC, basically, ano yan, parang, di ba, yung, basically, just just fight it out amongst yourselves since mal mali ang relatively lower ang barrier to entry mo, tapos uh, hindi ka pa heavily regulated, sila-sila uh, na lang yung maglalaban. And so, Pagka merong isang kumpanya na magaling or kaya mag-offer ng magandang produkto at lower prices or merong brand recognition like URC, Haswid, Jack and Jill, C2, Nissin, uh, Great Taste, stuff like that, may advantage ka agad. And you can grow it much faster. Kaya... Yung potential URC, medyo mas, in a way, no? medyo mas, mas mataas. Mas mataas or unlimited. Kasi they really just have to find a competitive advantage. Diba? They just have to identify where their strengths are. And right now, si URC, ang strength niya is offering good products at low prices. Diba? Yan yung biggest competitive advantage niya. Eh. Or pioneering products. Stuff like that. So, once they are able to do that, pwedeng sila na agad yung ipatronize ng tao instead of other cars, instead of other products. And so that can cause their their sales to grow by leaps and bounds. Diba? So pwedeng iba-ibang approach ang gamitin ni URC. Pwede nilang murahan, kaumpisa. Tapos pagka na-penetrate na nila yung market, tsaka nila tataasan pag kilala na yung brand, stuff like that, mga ganun strategies. So, Basically, the industry that URC operates in is much more competitive since established na si URC. Medyo may konting stranglehold na yan sa, sa, ano, sa, uh, sa market. Diba? Hindi na basta-basta matatalo yan. So, kaya, the prospects for it are higher and so the PE ratio niya is higher because it is easier to believe that uh, URC can 
earn as much as they can as long as they use the for business strategies. So, ganon. So, yun yung isang ask niyan. Um, next is, we can also use naman the, the PE ratio and compare it to the historical PE ratio of that same company. And we can use it to decide whether this company is a good investment or not. Or it could, at the very least, be a starting point for that decision. So let's look at Jollibee right now. So Jollibee right now trading at around 145 pesos per share. And as you can see, yung current PE ratio ni Jollibee, 24 times. Yeah, 24 times yung current PE ratio niya. Now let's look at the historical. No? Kahit anong PE ratio gamitin mo niyan, diluted, basic, end code, alas pare-pareho lang kasi uh, wala naman masyadong kakaibang shares or options dito sa listed company. So kahit anong gamitin mo dyan, bottom line is from 2013 to 2019, the PE ratio of Jollibee was at around 13 to 40. Diba? May times pa nga nung 2015, 48 ang P.E. ratio niya. So, mataas. Diba? So, nasa, sabihin mo na average mo niyan, 43. So, 43 times ang P.E. ratio mo for the past 6 years, kunwari. And right now, ang P.E. ratio ni Jollibee, 24. So, for the past 6 years, nasa 43 siya. Ngayon, 24 na lang. So, pwede mo yung gamitin. Uy, that should make you question. Actually, this is a very, very good way to use the PE. That should make you question. Uy, what happened? Diba? What happened? Bakit biglang bumagsak naman yung PE ratio ni Johnny B? Bakit mukha namang binentahan siya ng sobra-sobra year compared to other years? And so, um, that, no? Titingnan mo, ano ba ang nangyari kay Johnny B? Kaya siya bumagsak nito. So this is where our analytical skills will come in. Kasi it's not always as easy as dati ang 6-year average niya 43. Ngayon 24. Uy, buy na agad yan. Kasi mas mura. Kasi that will assume na you feel like it will revert back to the average soon. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work like that. So you have to dig a little deeper. You have to to understand first, ano ba yung factors kung bakit bumagsak itong P-E ratio to this level? And of course, ito, sobrang dalin sa, uh, it's very, very easy to answer this right now. Essentially, Jollibee is one of the victims of the pandemic. So, sarado. Kahit pa sabihin natin na they are they are engaging in delivery services right now and they are they are selling their chicken uh, frozen in supermarkets in Metro Manila, stuff like that. Kahit pa sabihin natin yun, I think the reality is Jollibee will be greatly affected by the by this pandemic. Kasi, uh, isipin nyo na lang, how many, how many birthdays occur in Jollibee in a year? <laughs> how many kids, how many people celebrate their birthdays in Jollibee all over the country, all over the world. And all of those now are not going to be allowed most likely until the end of the year, siguro. Yeah, with social distancing. So, revenues agad yun. Nawawalang revenues yun. Ayun pa naman, medyo magandang revenues yun kasi ang bilis eh. Diba? It's a one-time, big time siya. So, nawala agad yun. Aside from that, Nagsara talaga yung restaurants nila. They are not allowed to accept dine-in clients. They can only serve take-out deliveries. Hindi naman lahat ng tao na kumakain sa Jollibee may kotse para mag-drive to. Uh, hindi naman lahat ganun ka-internet savvy para mag mag magpa-deliver. Diba? Some of them talagang namamasyal lang, gusto lang lumabas, tapos makikita, oy Jollibee, na lang tayo kumain. So may mga ganun instances na dine-in pa din, of course. Just just imagine, diba? every time you pass by Jollibee, there's a lot of people there. Now there aren't any people there. So those are already lost sales. Not everyone will convert to delivery or takeouts naman. 
So, ganon. So, may ganong element. Now, sabihin, siguro, kung yung, yung pandemic issue will only last for a few months, maybe Jollibee will be able to withstand it. No, I mean, they'll be able to, to withstand it. Pero what you, you have to question, what if it becomes longer? So, you know, you analyze, you think for yourself, how comfortable am I investing in Jollibee right now? Definitely, it's cheap valuation-wise because mababa ang PRA, especially compare it to its historical average. Pero are there any fundamental changes to the business that might cause it to have a hard time to go back to where it was before? If you think na, oy, lilipas lang din ang pandemic after six months, babalik na ang tao kasi magiging komportable, ganun, ganun. Then, okay, you can buy the Pero if you think na, oy, baka maapitohan siya in the near future, stuff like that, then you can um, think deeper about whether you want to invest in Jolly before the long term or not. Ganun. So I think naman the management is capable. I think naman uh, the brand is very, very strong. Diba? The brand is very, very strong. In fact, uh, nag-start na ulit siya mag-reopen sa China. Diba? So I think almost all of their brands in China are now open. So hopefully naman, no? especially being a homegrown company, hopefully ano naman, they they things to recover for them soon. And I have faith naman in the management that they know what to do and that the, you know, the brand is strong enough that they will be able to withstand this. So if you feel the same way, then definitely you can treat this anomaly when it comes to the pay ratio as an opportunity to, to buy or to add more Jollibee shares. If you think naman that uh, baka mahirap sila makarecover, then that's the time na maybe you avoid Jollibee pa. So, ganun. So, ayan. So, basically, yan lang yun. So, I guess, um, that's it, no? For, for tonight's um, discussion uh, about EPS and PE radio. So, I, I hope, no, na medyo na, na open up tayo dun sa, dun sa ways of analyzing a, a, a company, the ways of investing in a company. So that uh, we'll be able to make better investment decisions, which is even more important now. Maraming stocks na mura, madaming stock na bumagsak, pero it's better if we can pick the right ones para kahit long-term tayo mag-hold, we can have the peace of mind na most likely aakit talaga siya instead of bababa. So if I can just, uh, ano sir, kung, kung pwede lang, ano ko lang yung in case they are interested to open and nakag would that be okay? Sure, definitely. Yeah. Yun yung mga okay. tanong ng ibang tao kasi <laughs> ah, okay. they, they want to open an account or they want to start investing but hindi nila alam kung saan sila pupunta. So guys, again, First Metro Securities is one of the brokers that I personally use. Si Robby rin yung nag-guide sa akin in terms of using the app. And ang, ang maganda rin talaga sa app is that meron siyang mobile app so you can see what's happening with your portfolio kahit na nasa, sa mobile phone mo lang. So, um, yeah, sige. If you want to share how they can open an account, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I'd just like to let you know, no? um, just in case, no? just in case you, you want to, to invest in the stock market, uh, yun, hopefully you consider First Metro Securities, uh, especially now that we're on ECQ. Uh, we've made it easy for you to open accounts. No? So the whole account opening process is paperless. So it's just essentially three easy steps. No? So just if you want to take a screenshot or whatever, uh, just visit our website, firstmetrosec.com.ph. Uh, click on open account and then just essentially complete the online form, provide the necessary details. And after that, uh, upload your documents online. Once you do, you will be scheduled for a quick video call to verify. verify, And then within one to two days after that, your account would, is ready for activation. So you can now start investing in the stock market. 
So, wala na po kayo ipapadalang forms. No? You don't have to print out forms. You don't have to manually sign uh, any documents on our end. So, it's all going to be done online. Just take screenshots of your IDs and then your, your proof of bank accounts, make statements, and ma-activate namin siya from there. Uh, and yun, if ever you're going to join, no, or, or even if not yet, uh, yun, invite na lang din namin kayo to like our Facebook page. So it's First MetroSec uh, Facebook. And then after joining our page, you might want to also join our group, our community. So we have a growing community there. And yun, uh, in case you found this useful, no, uh, Aside from from the present na, na YouTube and Facebook, you might also want to subscribe to First Metro's uh, YouTube page. Uh, may mga market updates tayo dyan, no? So what we think is happening in the market. In fact, we have one tomorrow. So yeah, all of those things are at your disposal. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I specifically asked Sir Sir John to to uh, give me the opportunity to do because uh, we want to be able to help you ed elevate your, your investing uh, prowess now. So, thank you, sir. No, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Nice. All right. Wow. Grabe. Ang ganda ng, <laughs> ano, ganda ng session. Uh, Nag-assign ako sa group kung ano yung if they're learning. Sabi nila, yes, definitely. Um, si Jason, sabi niya, yes. Si Mariah, sabi niya, yes. Si Pretzel, yes, rin. And si Melissa, yes. Tapos, the PE ratio is eye-opening. Yun. No, so, mm. thank you. Thank you so much, Robbie. Actually, yes. guys, as you can see, when it comes to stock market investing, um, we cannot learn this overnight, right? There are a lot of things. It's a process of learning. And we can sometimes, based on my experience, I have to, you know, parang nangyari sa akin, I burn some cash along the way. Uh, isa ako sa natamaan yung na, na mention ni Robby na yung price ng stock mura uh, sige na lang binili ko ng ano million shares uh, di ba ganun pero <laughs> wala pa lang value yung mga ganun na stock <laughs> but anyway it's a good thing so personally right now especially with uh, investment decisions stock market decisions I definitely ako personally EPS is one of the things that I look at and the PE ratio, besides the common na makita ba natin that the company is expanding, what's the brand reputation in the marketplace, it's a huge help talaga if we see, if we also know these things. Kasi ito yung mga information na as mentioned doon sa ating online course. One of the advantages if you're going to invest in the stock market kasi is meron ng a lot of information given inside the brokerage app no the first meta securities marami na doon merong price to book ratio price to sales ratio price to earnings ratio pero we do not know what it means hindi natin naiintindihan kung ano yun so that is why na we had this opportunity to to learn kung ano bang ibig sabihin noon and how can how we can use those information to our advantage diba so guys salamat po shadow uh, let's give robbie a lot of appreciation Comment na lang. Mahirap kasi virtually or appear na lang tayo sa kanya like ganon. And we're going to have a Q&A session on Friday. Unfortunately, we can't do it now. Okay, meron pa akong um, call with one of our community members dito. And so on Friday, May 1, that's a Labor Day. So holiday yan siya. Like, parang holiday na rin kasi nangyari sa buong mundo. And it's going to be at 8 p.m. still. It's going to be sa Zoom link. Kung gusto nyo mag-join sa Zoom link, which I really hope na mag-join kay sa Zoom link. Um, if you want to have questions, if you want to ask questions specifically about the stock market, Robbie is the best guy to ask um, pagdating doon. So, wag kayong mahiya. Now, I know some of us nahihiya tayo mag-ask. But don't worry about it. Right? And, yeah. So, ganun. Inviting everyone again on May, May 1 at 8 p.m. This is an advantage for us uh, to learn from Robbie as well. Okay, so Robbie, before we end, anything you wanna you wanna say to our viewers? Ayan, sorry. Yeah. So, ayan, uh, I hope lang. No, I hope everyone 
uh, was able to gain more insights uh, during this session. I hope I, I made it a little bit clearer for you on how the stock market works. And yeah, uh, I'm excited to to talk to you guys again on Friday. So if you have any questions, so again, thank you, sir. No, uh, I enjoyed this opportunity here tonight. All right. So thank you again, guys. Uh, wait, merong ano? Charlie, Charlie, and sir, how how much to open an account? Sige, uh, pakisagot ah, okay. na lang yung Robbie. <laughs> uh, right now, ano? Uh, right now, since it's on ECQ and we don't want you uh, going to the banks, no. Uh, oh, ac account opening is free. So you can fund your account after it has been activated. Na. Ayun. So, yeah. So opening an account is free during the ECQ. So we have about two weeks pa siguro. So hopefully you open within that time period para you can open one for free. Okay. So guys, remember again, when you open an account, that doesn't automatically mean na nag-start na kay invest sa stock market. That's the first step. After that, you're going to fund the account and you can start picking your stocks using this information to your advantage. So that's why na kung wala pa kayong investments, no problem. It's actually an advantage as well kasi nauna yung learnings, yung education before the execution part. Hindi yung tulad sa akin, nauna yung execution before the education part. <laughs> so... Yeah. So guys, thank you once again. See uh, see you guys on May 1 no, at 8 p.m. Join the Zoom link which nakalagay naman sa ating Facebook group and prepare your questions about stock market investing and um, see you. Okay? So bye-bye everyone and have a great night.